<laughs> well, what we'll do is we'll get back on track. See ya. <laughs> no, I've, I've got an opportunity here, and, and I'm going to use up every every bit of, of ounce of it I can I can get. Um, so we've got you back, and you, and probably by the time you finished London, you went back to Australia, uh, and um, was or, or had you found another um, mentor or teacher um, after London? No, I I, <clears throat> I had to leave uh, London. Uh, fairly quickly because my father died and that was an interesting uh, energy experience um, in itself uh, that I didn't know about back then but in retrospect I know exactly I knew exactly what was happening that's another story in itself so uh, anyway I left London and um, with the current knowledge that I had gained from uh, Chu and I came back to Australia and I uh, discovered that uh, it was much the same situation in Australia with the Taiji area, all the airy fairy, uh, mystical mumbo jumbo still. And so I thought, well, you know, even after this short time of uh, studying with uh, Chu, uh, maybe the knowledge that I do have will help people. And so uh, I started. Um, teaching actually at a local um, acupuncture uh, college. So I was still doing Chuking Hall system uh, when I went back to Australia. Okay, now what most of the people are really keen about is how you came across um, the, the ability to contact with um, other masters, in other words, um, you've, you've got some pretty interesting stories how you, you've gained more information by doing little favours here and there um, to, to basically get more of the information that you've been giving up to us. So tell us a, a, a quick summary of, of how you, you got to get all this advanced information from the Wudang, um, your, your Qi development. I, I don't want much. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I, uh, <laughs> hang on, I'll just send you some chi. <laughs> Did you get it? I've, I feel much better. Great. Ah, uh, good. Uh, yeah, I, um, I took on many jobs, uh, as I have, have done all of my early life in order to support myself and, um. One of the jobs I had was uh, being a chauffeur, and I, I literally had the funny cap and the suit and driving limousines around. Still had the long hair, and the cap would sit on top of my head like that. Hang on, mate. Okay. Hi, Colin. Hello. <laughs> bye bye, darling. Say hello, Kathleen. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, I I took on many jobs. One of the jobs was a chauffeur, and I each morning uh, I lived in Sydney, um, right on Sydney Harbour, and my route in the morning would take me down by the uh, the naval docks, uh, Garden Island, I think it was that back then. It's disappeared now, and I would literally see this uh, older gentleman down there practicing something, uh, and I was got interested and I sort of plucked up enough courage to pull the limo over one morning and uh, just get out and watch him and he didn't take any notice of me. And uh, So uh, one morning I got out and I said, well, I'm just going to start doing my Tai Chi and show him what it's like because he was doing like a really, really old man sort of a, a, a taiji. And I thought, uh, you know, he's doing a silly old bugger, old man's taiji. So I started doing my big tai chi and you know, big movements, looking around every now and again to see if he was watching me and thinking, gee, I must be looking good. And, of course, uh, that was Chang Yu Chan, and uh, he turned out to be uh, the greatest teacher that I've, uh, that I've ever met. And what he was doing, of course, was what I'm doing now, um, and uh, I plucked up enough courage to uh, literally just ask him 
to teach me and he wouldn't even wouldn't even talk to me at first until after many many months of just going down there every morning and practicing myself and uh, then all of a sudden he just started coming over to me every every now and again and just saying couldn't speak much English do this and and do that and so on and I uh, started asking him about the the self defense area which I was at that time being a young buck I was mostly interested in and I kept badgering him about this and I guess he got frustrated because he couldn't speak much English and so he literally I don't know whether it was one finger or two fingers I don't know whether what what it was because I simply ended up on the ground on the grass just by him and all I saw was a flick in his eyes flick of his body and next thing I'm waking up on the ground and uh, and he's over there as if to say well that's what it's all about and so I started to begin to think well shit is this moving people without touching them real but no of course he did touch me because I had a little mark on my neck just here and I, I think he just used one of the techniques I use now which is just literally he you know someone's talking to you like that and it's literally just like that and uh, I think he did that and just walked off and he knew he, he knew I was okay because I was a young man strong young man and so he uh, every morning I would come down and uh, he would teach me he was uh, an illegal immigrant to Australia he used to be a barefoot doctor in China and he literally jumped ship, uh, so I discovered. And I knew a few people in immigration, and so I did a, literally did a few things for him um, in order that he stayed in Australia. And so for that, he started um, teaching me. I've got many articles and interviews with him up on my uh, website and so on, if people want to read all about that. So that was my first introduction to, well, my only really, well, I, I, I do have a few others, but that was my real introduction to uh, real Taiji. Mm. Okay, now one of the big stories that everyone wants to know is how you came across the Wudang information. Well, he, taught, he, he knew this stuff, and there were four, the first four, uh, Wudang forms I learned from him and again I didn't quite know what these things were but they, they were good and I enjoyed doing them, they were fantastic things and they really added to my Taiji practice, I didn't quite know what they were but then I started to think I had a very inquisitive mind and I literally would search the world looking for the best teachers, the foundation teachers like the sons of sons of sons, you know, who, <clears throat> who invented all this stuff. And uh, Ben, come here quick. You're the only one. We haven't got one yet. <laughs> Say hello to Colin. Hey, Colin. Hi, Ben. How are you? How's it going? I, I, I didn't recognize you with short hair. Uh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm all good too. Oh, uh, yeah. Even, even though you, your brother tore So me. I'm going to see your, your son on Friday. Yeah, he, I've, I've shipped him out. I've got rid of him. He's in yeah. he, he's in London as we speak. Yeah. And um, you, did your brother... That's right, yeah. Did your brother tell you he tore my hamstring? No. no. Oh, well, I, we'll have to make up a good story about it, but I'm blaming him. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, I'll leave you to it then. See you later. Bye. Yeah, so um, I, in my endeavors to find out what was real, I uh, wanted to go back. I knew that there was an earlier system from which Taiji had come, of course. I thought it was a magical, mystical system. Then I discovered that there was a group of people uh, still in China uh, living on near the Wudang Shan or the Wudang mountain range from whence everything has come. 
Chang Yu Chan, sorry, not Chang Yu Chan, uh, Chang Sung Fung. He was a real person. He didn't do Taiji, as so many people think. He just invented the foundation forms upon which Taiji and Bagua and to some extent Xingyi have been built. And they were called Wudang, Wudang system. Uh, Chang Yu Chan around uh, 1370, he died in 1370, not Chang Yu Chan, I keep saying him, uh, Chang Chang Sang Fang. Uh, died in 1370, so that's how far back the Wudang stuff goes. And he was uh, a very famous uh, acupuncturist, and he had two buddies, uh, and they were also barefoot doctors, acupuncturists. And um, they started to work out how what they were doing in the healing area could also be used to kill, to defend themselves, because... You've got to remember back in those days, as I said before, you know, there's no lovely police force to you can ring up and, and you know, you've just got to do it all yourself back in those days. And it was downright dangerous to live in China in those days. So he wanted to invent a system. So he started working on his acupuncture because he had an, an extensive knowledge of this stuff. And he knew that the things that he was doing could be used to heal people. So... He then, I guess, he then simply thought, well, what if I either put in adverse energy or uh, tried to damage these points? Would it have the reverse effect other than healing people? And, of course, it did. And uh, he, uh, thank goodness, he did it, so we don't have to. He practiced on people. He would uh, pay jailers, for instance, so I'm told, to... Uh, get the baddies and they would pray, you know, bang, oh, only knockout. Yeah, that's good. Write it down. Bang. Oh, okay, kill. Yeah, great. Really good point, <laughs> that one. So that's what he would do. So and that so 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 over a period of about nine or ten years, I think, of communicating backwards and forwards, uh, I've and because I'd learnt the old Yang style, uh, Chang Yu Chan didn't even know yeah. Yang Ching Fu's form. So because I, I learned the old Yang style, these people were very interested in this and there was not, well, they couldn't find an eye. And to my knowledge, there were only a handful of people, if that, in China, still doing the old Yang style. And so, uh, you know, we started negotiating and negotiating. So, so to cut a long story short, and it is a long story, I finally got to go to uh, China, <clears throat> the only Westerner, to have done so, to uh, study with these people. Um, prior to that, I was asked to go to China, however, and that's when I met uh, Wang Xingwu. He's the man who handed me a little certificate of mastership at the end of my visit there. That's a different story, but that's, that's an important area of my training as well. Um, because that sort of brought me up to the next level anyway. So I went to, uh, in 81 that was, I went to China and uh, took some of my students with me and to the the All-China Wushu uh, National Championships, and I was the first Westerner to ever be invited over to that tournament. So I got up and uh, performed at the tournament and... Uh, I met an old guy called Fu Fu Sheng Fu Zhongwen. I used to know him as Fu Fu Zhang Man. Fu Zhong Man. That's what because it was a Cant uh, uh, a um, Cantonese uh, way of saying his name. Fu Zhongwen is the Beijing way. Anyway, he was the the uh, the nephew of uh, Yang Qingfu, and he actually knew the old Yang style. He never taught it to anyone, but he actually knew it because um, I had some training with him as well while I was there, as well as uh, a very famous uh, Bagua man called Li Junfeng and another very famous Bagua man whose name.